Yeah, so yeah. Uh, since you're talking about the journey, knowing your pastor with him, so we are going to start how, how you came to be a pastor and how mm. the challenges. So, so starting a church, parenting, how was it? Like, did God tell you, William, go start a church? Or do you just go to them? We're seeing people living in churches and they just start churching, uh, lighting churches. Like, what are the steps? Yes. For you to plant a church and early in your ministry as a young person, how was that and, and, and what step did you take to begin your own ministry? Yes. So, uh, to start a church, uh, anyone can start a church. It's easy. Sometimes people feel it's easy. You can just start because it's just like you agree two, three people, you come together and you start up something. But it's not an easy thing. Yeah, it's not an easy thing because if you're not called for it, uh, it's a, in fact, it's a dangerous thing as well, challenging and all that. But for me, as I can say, I had the revelation. I had the revelation, uh, which is a very long story to tell now. I had the revelation, uh, God visited me and I know convinced me to start a church. So, and imagine as a young person, somebody who didn't have much knowledge, but because of the prophetic word first I received, yeah. it was convincing me that God has called me because I can't receive a message in 1990. In Congo, uh, with a, with a, a, an auntie of mine, and then I'm now in South Africa with a white man who doesn't know me, who doesn't know my aunt, and all that speaks of the same message. So I I was convinced that God has called me. Yeah. So then I had to now I uh, started seeing the face of God. I, it took me times. I said from from 2000, 2001, almost like one year, I was seeing the face of God, praying and all that until I got the revelation while I was in another church. I got the revelation that. God wanted to start the work. So I started a, a ministry at a church. Uh, as I, I said, it was called Siloam Church with the vision to send people out. Because Siloam means sent. Yes. Yeah, sent means sending out. So it was a mission to prepare people and send them out to go and do the work of the ministry. So that was the very first church uh, that I started. So you had a revelation from God. Yes. So uh, today is... Pastors, we have, especially here in America, people are just creating churches with no vision, with no, they just because they, they they fought a little bit and they and they and, and they just leave. Yes, is that appropriate? Uh, that's wrong. That's totally wrong because uh, there's always a, a, a process. There's always a process. You can serve under someone. That's like me. I serve under people. I was also under uh, other churches. I served, you know, faithfully until the time I was released. And when I was released, there was no issues, there was no fighting, there was nothing. I was, you know, released and blessed, yeah. and I go. And then that's that's how it should be. But you shouldn't uh, rebel yourself because maybe this one is doing what is not going with you and all that. So that's a wrong motive. So people start some of that change with wrong motives. So as a pastor and as a man of God, so those kind of churches that start with the wrong motive or the of against rebellion, are those churches really accepted by the Lord? Because I know the Bible says that if if you have seen and 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 we go and gather without confessing ourselves, we just we just bring noise in front of the Lord and not really worshiping. So are those churches that just start from rebellion really recognized by God? And do their prayers that they happen they really are really considered by God or sincerely done by God? Um, one thing I can say when you start something the wrong motive first, it's not accepted by God. But God can still accept it if you, you go back. Because God is a God of, of compassion. He's a compassionate, he's a merciful God. So if you are a man who realizes your mistakes, you realize we have gone wrong and are ready to repair your mistakes. So God can give you grace. God can give you the, 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 the mercy. You know, he can show you mercy and accept your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's one thing I know. Okay. So it does not mean because you repair, you left. But if you continue to walk in the same rebellious spirit, Without realizing what you have done is wrong, I'm telling you, you can't go. Yeah. You can't go some miles because God is a God of principles, and you have to work in the principles. So God, yes. Okay, so, so since we're talking more about you, you begin a church, and uh, what are the challenges of starting a new church as a, as yeah. a minister? Because I know maybe some of this you still face it today, but what are some of the challenges? That you faced starting that ministry in 2001. Yeah, so what I'm going to say in short, I started ministry in 2001, and the first church was called Siloam Church. And then, uh, because 
when I was when I was where I was staying, so God took me out of that place, and I, I really got the revelation again for the second time that I have to leave the place and go to another city. And the church I started, God asked me then told me to leave it, okay. and leave it and just to resign out of it. So I resigned out of it and left it under the leadership of uh, my junior pastors. Okay. So I went to another city and I started a brand new ministry with a new vision that we are calling today City of Glory Church. And uh, which year was that? 2003 now. So two, two years, years later. later. Yes. Okay. 2003. So now we started the, the City of Glory Church. And then the City of Glory Church itself, by then, it was called the New Anointing Fellowship. That was a, the brand new name. So it was New Anointing Fellowship. On that point, how do you come up? How do you come up with the name of a church? Like, is God reveals you call this church? Uh, this like, just, like, for me, I had your revelations. So God told you to call it New Life Church. Yeah, uh, new, new Anointing. And then God Fellowship. told you again to call it City of Glory Church later. Uh, so the, 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 when, we started, uh, when we started New Anointing Fellowship, so that was a message I received for the very first time. We should call it a New Anointing Fellowship. It was really by revelation. So then when we started moving with the ministry, as ministry was growing, uh, this, the main center, the first, the mother church, the main center was called the City of Glory Center. Okay. Yeah, the City of Glory Center. But the church itself, the umbrella of the ministry, was a new anointing. So now, as the church was growing, we started having branches uh, here and there in different countries. So we now uh, came to start churches in the uh, French country uh, speaking, you know, uh, nations. nations. So then the, the name uh, gave a lot of bit of challenges yeah. for people to interpret the name New Anointing Fellowship into French or so it became a little bit challenging. So we had to sit down with the church board. Okay. Yeah, we had to sit down with the church board and say, since this name is giving challenges, to other uh, nations, and we want to be uniform. We want to have a uniform name. So what What if we just remain under the same umbrella, but we take the City of Glory Church, which, which City of Glory name, which was the mother church, and and now we can name it after all our churches all over the world. Okay. Yeah, and then the board said, okay, so I think it's fine because it is a little bit more understandable because some people do not understand what is new anointing, what is all that, you understand that? Yeah. Yeah, so, but the vision still the same. We operate under the same vision, but we just amended. We did not change, we amended the name because the City of Glory was already there. It's part of the center of the Mother Church. So, did you get uh, confirmation from the Lord about it because the Lord revealed to you about the new anointing fellowship? Did you get confirmation? Okay, yeah, you can rename the. Yeah, we, we took some time. We took some time to pray over it yeah. because, yeah, after we, we, we sat with the board and uh, started talking about it. So it was very hard for me even to just say we, we can change it. Yeah. So we took time to pray over it until we really felt that the Lord is, is allowing us to move yeah. into that direction. But the only one thing, we could not change the vision. You know, we are, we are, we, we are out of time, but we got to just ask. Yeah, so when you said that you are uh, City of Glory Church, how many churches do you have now at the City of Glory Church? Uh, we, we have a number of churches now, which uh, we know we are in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, so we what, what we do normally, our system, our churches are, are mm -hmm. more, more independent. Okay. So we 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 don't really uh, like you know take the full leadership of all the churches. Yeah. So we have, for example, uh, when we started, like let's say in the city. In, in Congo, we started main church. Yeah. So the pastor is allowed as well to plant his own churches that will be under under him himself. Okay. Yeah. So, which I'm, I may not have the whole really account. account of all, but we just know we have this and that. But we, we, we until we get, yeah, but we have churches in different cities. Like in Uvira, we have, you know, churches. We are in Kalemi, Bumbashi, and all that. But our, our, like in Congo, our ministry, is already covered, registered by the whole uh, government of the of Congo from Kinshasa. So we have all the papers. So we can operate in all cities in 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 Congo. In, Congo. in Namibia, the same. So okay. we are in Namibia as well. Uh, we have two main churches that we. What I I left myself before I came over. Yes. So we have a church in 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 in, in Okahanja. We have the church in uh, Ochiwarongo. Some of those cities in Namibia, and also last year. So we also adopted another church in in the city, okay. yeah, in in uh, 
in the electricity adopt, window. By adopting, do you mean like uh, so they be, they become part of you, like an adoptive church or like yeah? So by adopting means uh, so the the pastor of the church so had a revelation some years some years back that God wanted him to come and save and our leadership. Okay. So and he been talking to us about it, and then we had we took time to pray because normally we don't adopt churches because we don't all our churches are churches we started ourselves. Okay. So yeah, we had so many people come. Hey, would they call? Hey, men of God, we we have church. Can you adopt our church? But we don't normally adopt churches. Okay. So we we yeah we don't go into that system. When hear people say, yeah, we have fifteen branches, twenty, fifty. We I think by now we have had many, maybe hundred of of them. But we we don't just because we've realized that so many people want their churches adopted for 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 different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Have you gone to school to study theology? Because and is theology important uh, for ministers of God? Because I got some churches. Oh, theology will not take you to heaven. Theology, blah, blah, blah. it's not important. And yes. Only the word of God. Like like, have you studied theology? And is it important for ministers to study theology? Uh, what I can say. Uh, Everybody has his own, you know, opinion when it comes to to the personal calling and also when it comes to theology. Yeah, but as for me, I always believe that before a man will go for theology school, first must confirm his calling with God. Yeah, that's that's my belief. Yeah. So, and it also happened with me because when I started ministry, I didn't have any. Uh, theological background mm -hmm. i didn't have any yeah so I, i'm just a man who just been called by god and accept the calling i started you know studying the word of god and the spirit was leading and uh, into a time of prayer and i could see god moving yeah and then by then i realized that no we are living in the world mm -hmm. and this world sometimes they need proof they want to see uh, things and all that and that's when now i went into uh, theological school. So, by the special grace of God, uh, I have a degree in theology. Uh, from which university? Uh, I, I did uh, I did part in in, in, in Africa, mm -hmm. and then when I came here too, so I I, I did uh, actually the, the degree that I did I did it here okay. with a, a theological school in in North Carolina. North Carolina. By the extension here in in uh, Phoenix. In Phoenix. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, we really quick pastor. So then you came to from Namibia churches. You came to the United States, um, and now you're a pastor of a City of Glory Church here in the U.S. Um, how has that been uh, as a pastor in the U.S.? Because you've been a pastor in Africa, yes. you've been a pastor. You have you have pastor churches everywhere, and you have, there's a shift in culture, shift in tradition. How has it been here in the U.S.? Yeah, that's a very very challenging, very challenging. So because. Uh, in fact, before I came over, I was a full-time minister. I was a full-time pastor. You know, I was full-time pastor in Africa. Uh, even though uh, through the same ministry, God has helped us to raise uh, a few businesses that could help to to generate income to support the ministry, support us ourselves as ministers. Uh, but the challenges are there is that saving the we have more time, you know, more dedicating time to ministry than here in America. Because in America, uh, as you know, the life system is not easy. Where you have to, uh, first you have to commit yourself to other works, like working, you know, making money to support your family uh, and all that. So it becomes a little bit challenging because we don't have much of, financial support in church in America as we used to have in Africa. Because in Africa, as a minister, as a pastor in the church, so you are supported directly by your, your members. Yeah. And also, you can also create your own, just like, uh, you know, we had, we had some businesses that we created. Yeah. We, we, we created some business to generate income for the ministry that were supporting members who are committed, who are saving their full time, and also supporting us. So, and also, we have more time time of prayer, time of reading the word of God is more, is more because most of the time you are like full time in ministry. But in America, the system is a little bit different because you have to work, you have to care because the, the, the life standard in America is too high. So you have to make sure you take care of your bills and there are too many bills to pay. That's another thing. So, and the church cannot really support because the church cannot be able to, to support us here. But, but 
why is that a case? Because we see our other churches, like uh, our Western churches, like uh, our fellow white churches, they have full-time pastors who are paid by the church, who, who are full-time doing the work of the Lord. They commit themselves to the Lord. Like, how is it different uh, from our African churches, especially as a minister, not having that? So the main challenge that I see here the main challenge that I see uh, here, of course, yes, our 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 Western, you know, pastors here, they are well up because they are they are supported by their churches, they are well paid. Uh, in fact, they are full time, many of them. But for us, it's difficult because our churches face, you know, when it comes to finances, uh, the giving is very little, and also not only little, we we have problem, you know, growing in number in this in this in these countries. So we have very, very, uh, we have very, very uh, serious problem because most churches, they don't really grow so big to have uh, that number that can generate a very good income to support the pastor. Well, and on that, because I wanted to ask a question here before, because this this is a no only our pastor. Yes. We can speak forever, but we just want to leave it here. But yeah. uh, we have a problem of going in numbers in churches, and that I believe is because you have so many churches. One, there's like. I don't know why I come from in Denver. I've counted maybe like 15 African churches, whereby some churches are like five people, 10 people. The words that I had here, because earlier you said you were in Cove, in, in Ovira, that, but then because that was a truck driver, you were transferred to Cove yes. and got baptized in Uber. Back in Lakom, we used to have this transfer process of Christians from one church to another. I believe you had a letter of, says, a combination letter from a church in Vila that we recommend William, he's a good person here, take us. Is that the case here? Like, when I, when we have churches being planted and people just take Christians, do we get those transfers, those letter of recommendation? Because I still I think, I still have mine from Calvary, but I've never given to any church here, but do we still have that? And if not, why is it not the, the case for American, African, let uh, churches? Uh, that's a very good question to ask. So the main problem that I see here is that, as we said, the first churches are not really growing. Yeah, churches have problem grow. Because in America here, in uh, especially our African community, to just fund a church that has a, a, a number uh, or membership of 200, it's a mega church. <laughs> you see, yeah, if you find a church here that has uh, 200 to yeah. 300 people here, yeah. it's a mega church. Of Africa. Of Africa. It's a mega church. So that's that's the main problem. So now there's that kind of competition. There's kind of uh, people not being stable. And you realize that churches are not growing. Honestly, churches are not growing. Because if you move around churches, you will understand that they are almost the same members who move from this church to this one, to the other one, and the other one. So there's not that growth of winning souls. There's not that growth of like new people being born again, being converted, you know, into 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 Christianity and, and become church members. So you realize that if you go to a new church right now, yeah. Yeah, if you go to any new church right now, you will find if it's not half, maybe you will find at least 30% of the members you found there, you recognize them from being in another church uh, maybe a few years ago, a few months ago. Yeah. So now that's another challenge that is there. So now it makes people feel like if they go through those process of uh, you need to bring papers, you need to bring what and what, so you will end up not even have 20 people. Pastor, do you guys get money in churches? Because if you're not going in numbers because of so many churches, is there any money that that is is uh is uh, with uh with uh with churches so money money i can't say, money is uh you know people do contribute there are offerings that comes there are tithe that comes but the only problem uh most of our people are not really faithful that's one thing i can honestly say uh most people are not faithful uh most people they are they are they are not committed to give that's another thing and it makes people to be more and you know uh, more reluctance because uh, they they feel like they are okay, they are fine, and all that. Why should we give money to the church and all that? And that's why you find almost every pastor you need to secure your job. You need to make sure you have a job because otherwise you will sleep outside. <laughs> you will sleep outside because 
you may not have anybody to support you. So this is another challenge we have. Churches, most of our churches, they don't really make much money. Yeah, that's a different from our Western, our Western churches, our Western pastors. So you find you go to a church, uh, the money they make maybe uh, in a month is is a is a money that some of the the same church of 200 people, maybe 100 people makes in one month in the Western church is a money you make maybe in about three four three, four years. So as we come to an end of our first part of knowing your pastor. What advice can you give to first young ministers who are studying the ministry, two, uh, to those who have been in ministry, and uh, three, uh, maybe the last question will be like, have you ever thought of quitting being a pastor? Like, I'm done with this. I just want to go back to book for life. So many times, yeah, so many times when, especially challenges we face uh, in the ministry. That makes sometimes pastors to feel like quitting. Like myself, I've I've thought of that so many times. And my wife is a witness. So many times I cried to her and I told her, I think I need to quit these things and maybe try to to look for something else to do with life and focus on other things. So one of the things is that you know uh, the people you save. Sometimes you really dedicate yourself to people. Sometimes you have your own issues. As a pastor, you have your own problems, but you forget about your problems and focus on helping others. You focus on supporting others. But there are the same people who will betray you tomorrow. There are the same people who will go out and talk bad things about you. There are the same people who will criticize you. There are the same people who will bring hate into your heart again. Mm -hmm. And you feel like, what am I doing? What is this? Why am I doing this? Why am I committed to this kind of work while you save people and yet the same people tomorrow, they betray you. Yeah. So that's one of the things, yeah. And my advice to all, the, the especially young ministers, the, the one of the first thing, please, always do the right thing. Yeah. Do the right thing, you know, and be faithful to God. Of course, uh, challenges you face, people will never speak good of you at all times. Yeah. And not all people will ever appreciate what you do. No matter what you do, no matter how good you do it, you always have people who criticize what you say. But there's always one word I tell my people all the time, even the church, they know that. I tell them, when people talk negative things about you, when th people go around and say any sort of you know, negative things about you, so the first thing is that look at yourself. If what they're saying about you or what they're saying against you are found in you, please work on it. Uh, work on yourself. If it's something you need to repent, repent and do the right thing. And if there are things that the people are talking about, they are not finding you. All those negative things people talk about, the critics that people talk about, the, the, the bad things that people talk about, they are not in you. Please, I beg you in the name of God, don't mind, don't mind them. Don't mind them. Focus on God and keep moving forward. But do the right thing and remain faithful. So there's nothing God seeks much in a person than faithfulness. When you're faithful to God, God will fight your battles. Uh, God will always be there by you. God will provide in kind. Even when you are in need and people don't support you, even those that you are helping, you are saving, God himself knows how to open doors for you if you remain faithful to him. So that's one of the things that I can tell all my fellow ministers, especially the young ones who are coming up and those who are in the ministry. The same things apply to them. Be faithful to God. Do the right thing. So when you promise to do something for people in the church, do it. And that's another thing I realize. Most pastors, not all, but most of our, especially our African our pastors, what I've realized is that it kills their ministries and also a lot of frustrations. Yeah. Many of them, yeah. they give a lot of promises in the church that they don't fulfill. Yeah. For example, you tell people, all right, let's raise money. We are going to do this. Yeah. And then... The people raise money, and then what they say you do is not done. And now started asking for money later. What is the money? And it has that money is not there. Money disappeared. Money is nowhere to be seen. So these are some of the things that brings a lot of challenges in ministry. And my prayer is that we will all be serious. We will serve God with integrity. We will serve God with honesty. I remain faithful to God. I have seen God for the past uh, 20 uh, plus years that I've saved uh, in the ministry, I've gone through so many challenges. I've gone through so many critics. 
uh, not everybody loves what you do. Not everybody appreciates what you do. No matter how good you try, not everybody will ever appreciate you. But I've seen the faithfulness of God. God has been faithful, uh, and we continue to thank Him for what God is doing in our lives. Yeah. So that's my prayer to all. No, thank you so much, Mary's, uh, Pastor, for having us today. It's just the part of, an, of knowing your pastor. As I said, we are going yes. to discuss more on... Uh, we just learned about his journey, how he became a pastor, who is he, and, and, and his convictions, and why, and all these dates. We are going to ask him later on questions about marriage. How did they, how did he get married? How can a young person know that they are ready for marriage? Because we get all those questions. Hey, pastor, how am I, how am I ready to get married? How, how do I know this, this is my spouse? And he has written a book because I went through the same process with him when he was counseling me about my marriage. Maybe you're going to share about it. Uh, those steps and also we don't know when you get to marriage how do we live in there because we no longer seek advice so we're going to have a lot of conversation with uh, our, our, our pastor our father uh, and uh, just stay tuned on ours remember to comment like subscribe and uh, we will be bringing you all this for sure for now we are going to stop here and as we meet again in the next uh, episode. So stay tuned and uh, see you later. Again, this is Imada Lusaka and we are here with uh, Pastor yes. William Sobanoka, Reverend Pastor of City of Glory Church here in Arizona and across the world. So see you soon. <laughs>